So currently in the Gaza Strip, 46 people have been confirmed dead. More than 6,400 have been injured. It's been a terrible five weeks. The ongoing Great March of Return, the Great Return March, is continuing and will continue until Nakba Day. Right now, and uh, just ahead of this, I want to talk to a friend of mine in Gaza. He is a reporter and journalist in Gaza. He has been going and covering the Great Return March. So I'm going to bring him on right now and uh, speak to him about what's going on, get a real opinion. Just getting him in here right now. He will tell us about what he's seen on the ground in Gaza in the demonstrations, and it's a very valuable thing for people to be seeing. So if you are seeing this, share this as widely as possible and do go and follow my friend who is being added right now to this discussion we're going to have on the ground. Hello. How are you? Assalamu alaikum. From Salem. Can you hear me, bro? I can hear you. Perfectly. How are you? you? Hear me well. Yes. How are you doing? Just I'm let me well. try to fix the light. What do you think about the picture? It's okay. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, man. thank you so much, bro. Uh, I wanted to say hello to everyone who's watching this live streaming. This is me, and I'm Walid Mahmoud from Gaza Strip. And I hope to talk about, I would like to talk about my experience in the past month as we have been protesting for the fifth Friday here in Gaza. Uh, first of all, I have been following the Great March of Retain before it started since two months, before two months from its beginning. Uh, I have a local famous journalist here, he is Muthanna Najjar. He was the first one who installed the first tent night, uh, nearby the borders, and I have been streaming about this first tent to my people, my beige, uh, people were reacting about it. And it's, you know, we didn't expect that the great march of return will be successful. Actually, too many people were inspired by it. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people were joining this great march of return. The idea of the great march of return is where it was in the past to protest for one day only at the 30th of March in the land day. As many of you know that the, the land day in Palestine is in the 30th of March here. Uh, the idea were completely to protest in peacefully way, uh, to install a tent nearby the border and to carry banners and papers says about the Palestinian right to return, the Palestinian refugees have the right to return and come back safety to their homeland. As many of you know that in 1948, 80, yeah, uh, Palestinians, millions of Palestinian refugees were forced to leave their original homeland and villages, which called now occupied Palestine. The idea were to make uh, a traditional activities and to make peaceful activities there, such like making a traditional food, dancing a traditional dance, uh, speaking to media about our right. Uh, that's the idea of the Great March of Return. And that goal of it is to make the Palestinian voice reach to the whole world. You know, uh, the goal of the Great March of Retain is not to touch the border, is not to face the Israeli soldiers or attack them or use any violence way, just to use this peacefully way as many of the human beings are protesting when they demand their rights and the human rights law and the international, all the international laws have to keep those peaceful protesters people. Anyway, uh, in, in, 
uh, after. Uh, the Great Re Return March is uh, calling upon the UN resolution exactly, yeah. on or to be implemented. So it's all this entire march. It is it's rooted in international law, and of course, Israel are using as as you've witnessed on the ground. I, I'm going. I'm going to talk about what I have witnessed to bro by my eyes. I have been there every day, and I'm still going there every day. Anyway, in the 30th of March, thousands of people were came to this protest. They were enjoying, but unfortunately, the Israeli snipers, the Israeli army were preparing for to face this march, but we didn't expect they will use this violence against us. We expected they will use only this gas, but we didn't really expect that. Uh, the 30 of March bro when thousands of people and Palestinians families came nearby the borders to protest in the camps inside the tents and around the tents to talk and to do the, the traditional dances and to use the peacefully way to demand their right and to talk about their right to return. Uh, the Israeli were putting a tens of snipers in each area. We have five camps here and I was following the camp which in my village, Kuzaha. This village were completely destroyed in 2014. But despite of that, we have been successfully installed a camp there and I have been following it every day. Uh, you know, I was really inspired by it. People were completely peaceful, doing, meeting each other, talking to each other, screaming for their right to return. But unfortunately, suddenly the Israeli snipers, we found a tens of Israeli snipers behind the borders are shooting the live bullets and using the hit gun shots against the civilians people, against the children. They killed too many, they killed a tens of people around the camp and inside the camp and we were really shocked. And I remember that day there were a massacre, bro, a massacre. It's completely a massacre against civilians, people. Just imagine this. You and your family are going to protest there in a peaceful way, and suddenly an Israeli sniper is shooting fire toward you without any warning, without saying anything. Just you can hear the voice of people are screaming, wounded, and some people were... Uh, you know, the ambulances team couldn't even afford the help and the first aid for those people. It was really something like the end of the world is happening, bro. Too many people were wounded, thousands of people were wounded, thousands of children were smelling the tears gas and affected by it. And I was really shocked about what's happening. We thought that there is a war, bro. We say, oh, there's nothing. Palestinian resistance are silent. Nothing going on. There's no weapons. There is no rocks. There is no rocket. There is nothing, bro. All, only peacefully way. Uh, we were shocked. Actually, they committed inhuman crime against the peaceful protesters there. Uh, did, 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 what did you witness specific? What, what did you see? Injured. Yeah, you, uh, did you, you, bro, you know, one of the examples at the first day, I remember I was streaming, live streaming there, and they were shooting nearby me. Someone called my name, hey, Walid, how are you? And I wanted to say Alhamdulillah, which means thanks to God. I, I didn't have the time to, to respond to him, bro. He fell down in front of my eyes. I didn't have the time to say I'm fine or to say take care or I'm safe. The man were falling and after a few minutes, uh, I heard that he is in the intensive care. But Alhamdulillah, he got a healthy recovery, bro. This is one of the most basic things that I have witnessed. I have witnessed a Palestinians, a group of Palestinians, girls who were screaming, Trump, Trump, you will see Palestine will be free. They were screaming that in, in Arabic, bro. Uh, and then the Israeli snipers shot some of them and bumped the tears gas. Uh, 
uh, toward them. Uh, the day, the first day of the great march of return were completely long day. We didn't got a clear news because we have been receiving heavy news from too many resources, bro. We didn't know exactly what's going on. We are getting, get, we were getting really so shocked, you know. What's going on? What's happening? Are, are they crazy? N never. No, there is no one touch their borders. We are away like 100 meters from the borders. And the Israeli snipers did this in a human crime. After that, despite of that, despite of the crime, people were surprised about the number of people who came there to join this great march return. Then the leader, uh, you can say there, there is no leader for this great march, bro. Uh, group of youth only who is leading this march. They decided to continue until the anniversary, the 70th anniversary of Nakba. Because even the simple people here in Gaza were asking to continue us protesting in, be, in this peacefully way. And we didn't expect that the peaceful march would drive the Israeli snipers crazy and to commit more violence. Uh, that's why we went there and we are still going there, bro. Uh, and the are like ducks and it's disgraceful. In front of the entire world, there is even a 15-year-old boy that we uh, witnessed. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to talk about what I have seen yesterday by my eyes. Uh, then those youth decided to call the coming Friday the tires Friday, the, the Friday of tires, to burn the tires around the camp to protect the people and the protesters from the Israeli snipers in the next Friday. To be safe, bro, you know. If you are a peaceful man and standing at the border and someone is shooting live bullets against you, you have to take care of yourself or to keep safe. So we burnt those tires to confusion the to confuse the snipers and to protect ourselves only. We didn't mean to hurt anyone, we didn't want to hurt anyone just to protect ourselves from the Israeli snipers who is there shooting fire bro. Also I wanted to ask those people who claims that there is violence in this great march return. I wanted to ask them, have you heard about any Israeli soldiers being injured or got hearted by those peaceful protesters? I'm sure it's impossible to say that there is even one Israeli soldiers were hearted by those protesters, bro. We cannot even reach to them. You have to know that. There is like 50 meters buffer zone area between the Palestinians and the Israeli, and those this buffer zone area is dangerous zone and there is no one who want to risk of his family to cross the border or to touch the border bro that's what's going on and the next friday as i said after we burnt the tires despite of that the israeli occupation committed the same crime for the second friday and in the third friday they killed a Palestinian. In the second, also they killed the Palestinian. The third, I think, or the second, they killed a Palestinian journalist, Yasser Yasser Murtaja. I was there and watching what have been exactly happened to Yasser Murtaja. I was on live streaming and even I thought if you go back to my live streaming on my wall, my profile, you would find me screaming, "Oh Yasser! Oh Yasser!" I thought it's another name, bro. Then they said. It, he was Yasser Murtaja. Yasser Murtaja was like five or ten meters from me. He was carry, carrying his camera, shooting uh, the photograph and taking a professional photograph for his company, media production company, wearing the visits which addressed by Briss, his bulletproof, and he was only capturing the photos from there. Then he went inside the tires, not inside the tires, close to the tires to take a professional picture. But unfortunately, suddenly, I have seen the first aid teams are carrying someone who's a journalist. And when I asked who is he, they told me he, he was Yasser Murtaja and he was killed. Yasser was fine at the first, 
But then we found that the Israeli occupation using a dangerous bullets, a dangerous kind of bullets, bro. Imagine, let's talk about the bullets they use, bro. These bullets, it's not crossing your body only. The bullet have to explode inside your body, then it will go out. You see, it's not a bullet. It's like a bomb, bro. It's going inside yeah. the body, then it's exploded at making damage inside your body to kill you as best as it can or to cut a part of your body, such like food, uh, feet or a hand, then it will go out. That's the type of bullets they are using against these people and against the peaceful protesters there. I have witnessed a people whose their hands were cut in the brown. I have witnessed children's people who were their foot were cut in, cut to bro. And it was a horrible moment. Even yesterday, uh, there were, I was in the hospital, there is a tent such like a hospital there. <clears throat> the Red Crossing Point made it to uh, heal and to give the first aid for the injured people there. I was sitting and talking with my friend and I was told him, you see, we have only like two martyrs and I think a number of people who were injured are a hundred. I think it's the best day of the Great March of Return. This is from our point of view, bro. I mean, it's the most calmest day, yeah? Suddenly, suddenly, yesterday, yesterday yeah, suddenly the ambulances came and carrying a gun, head gun shot to bro. A Palestinian child who is 14 years old was killed in front of our eyes. Just imagine, bro, using this bullet and this bullet is going inside your brain and it's exploded. Your brain will be out and then the bullet will get out and you will be dead. That's it. That's what have been happening here. Yes, I witnessed that, bro. I even shared the picture of the child yesterday when the doctors were working hardly to keep him alive. But unfortunately, that child were killed. His name was Azam Aweda, and he was only 14 years old. Uh, one thing that I think it's important point to talk in the, about the Great March of Return. Inside the camp of the Return March, you will find hundreds of stories. People who's living poverty movement, people who's there, they lost their dearest ones in the past years, such like in 2014. You will find how much those people are suffering. And despite of that, they are still have the power to protest in peacefully way, bro. You will be inspired about that, believe me. I have met a woman carrying her, the picture of her son. And I went to ask her, is he your son? She said, yes. And when he was killed, she said, they bombed our home in 2014. And now I'm in this great march return to protest in peacefully way for our right to return. This is drove the tears in my eyes, bro, you know? Even I have met a mother of a prisoner there. I have met even a people who were injured before in 2014 attack or before that. Uh, I have met a children whose orphans, their fathers were killed in 2014 or in 2009. And now they are younger and they have the power to protest in peacefully way, bro. The soldier whose inside the borders. He has no feeling, bro. He is only a killing machine and committing the orders of his general to kill the peaceful people, to kill the civilians people there, to, te to, to shot the tears gas. Even yesterday, many of you have seen the tears gas pump which falled on someone's face and killed him. And you know, bro, yeah, something yeah. that happened to me personally yesterday when I was sleeping on my bed, bro. You know, being there, bro, you have to be careful as best as you can. You have to 
keep looking at the sky because maybe a tears gas pump will fall in your head and then it will kill you. It will be so hot and falling on your head, then this tears gas can kill you, bro. I was there and I was taking care as best as I can and looking at the sky, looking at the sky, looking at the sky. Oh, here is a tears gas. I have to escape. I, that's what's going on there. When I was sleeping yesterday in, in my bed, bro, I have seen in my dreams that a tears gas pumped falling on my face and suddenly my body were shaking. That's happened to me yesterday when I was sleeping, bro. And uh, imagine for the people watching, imagine if you were a child. Yes, exactly. That's the end. More than 500 children have been injured. Yes, and, uh, it's, it's horrible, bro. We are, we are living a horrific movie there. Wallahi. A peaceful people against tens of soldiers who is carrying one of the modern weapons in the world, which funded by USA government. They are using these bullets and this kind of bullets, bro. The international law says this kind of bullets is not for use, bro. It's not for use. Yeah. Just imagine really, this really. bullet will explode in your heart and affect this kind of damage, bro. The, the most of people who were killed were killed by this type of bullets, bro. And this bullet is very dangerous. Why they are using this kind of bullets in front of media, in front of the international communities, and no one is talking about it? What if this protest were in Western countries, such like America or any other country, and they are using these bullets against the peaceful protesters there? Then you would see the whole world is talking and showing the solidarity. And even you will see a government who is taking an action to stop this crime. Yeah? But why always the Palestinian blood is cheap in the world eyes, bro? This is the question. Why? If, imagine if we were who is sniping and who is using this violence against the Israeli soldiers, what the world would say? This is a real terrorism. We have to stop the Palestinians from killing. That's what they would say, bro. But when it's a matter of our as a victims, they keep silent. They are saying nothing. We haven't heard anything from any other government, which even Arabic government, bro, talking or denying what's going on in Gaza. Just this is what's going on here, bro. This is the truth. This is the reality. The fact this is the fact. Have any media organizations contacted you to talk to them about what you've seen? I, because you saw a 14-year-old killed in front of you. I, I, and I talked to many, to many people, bro. I talked to many journalists there. But unfortunately, yes. unfortunately, many of the journalists there are a local journalists, bro. They are a local. You would not find... Uh, and Western Channel is making a broadcast from there. You would not find that. Th this is why I'm doing my live streaming in English language. This is why I'm always calling the Western communities. Because, you know, we have, no one can deny that the Zionist media says uh, and claims, uh, the Zionist media machine abroad claims that the protesters are hurting the soldiers and throwing stones against them. Bro, even if it was stones, let us just imagine to believe them. Even if someone is throwing stones in you, this is not an excuse to kill him. You can stop him. At least you can shoot him in his hand or in his foot, bro. But not by using this kind of bullets. This is the at least thing you can do. Then he would stop. But to kill someone who is using a stone against them, this is a crime, bro. There is no one who is using stones or doing stuff. Many of people, even we have, you know, as a funny thing, in the Great March of Return, a group of youth called them the unit of tires. This unit of tires are collecting tires from the people of Gaza and burnt them around the camp to protect the protesters people from the Israeli snipers. And it's work, bro. The tires are work, you know. When the tires are off, then the Israeli snipers 
shot and started to kill too many, many people. This is what's going on there. there. There's too many journalists and I have made a lot of videos and a lot of interviews with those people to talk about what I have witnessed there. But unfortunately, they were not international. They were not talking to the Western people. They were talking only to local media. This is the yeah, I mean, the fact that contacted you, that there's been no mainstream media outlet or anybody in the West really contact you and speak about the fact that you saw a child killed in front of you, that you were there and witnessed your, uh, your journalist colleague, I guess, Mutarja, uh, shot uh, before he later died in hospital. And there's no mainstream organization. You're pretty well known and your live streams go a long way on media, on social media. <clears throat> the fact that they haven't picked up about targeting the journalists, bro, I wanted to tell you something that we have seen by our eyes. Uh, at the second Friday or at the third Friday, our cameras were able to capture a photos of an Israeli uh, journalist who is inside the borders. Yes, and those journalists haven't, didn't wear their visits or their bulletproof which means that the people and the protesters who is on the other side are peaceful protesters of Brown. You see, mm -hmm. this is an evidence showing that the people who is protesting in Gaza are peaceful people. Because inside the other side, inside the Israeli side, the journalists there are working without their bulletproof. proof. And this is means they are in safety zone, bro. And they are in safety place. There is no danger on them. And you know something, let us talk about, you know, you know something which is actually important too. Hamas wings, al Qassam wing, uh, the military wing of Hamas, of the, uh, the Palestinian resistance movement, have snipers too. And those snipers could snipe the Israeli soldiers, but they didn't did that to save the life of the protesters or to didn't, don't give the Israeli an excuse to kill the peaceful protesters there. This is the truth, bro, and this is the fact. And this is what the Westerners must know. Who's the real tourist? Who's doing? Even last week, they bombed six different targets. They bombed uh, in the port, the Gaza port, Gaza City, uh, uh, then six different Exactly, yeah. Bombed. About, look, bro, now the Israeli changing their play. Uh, they don't want people to keep talking about the great march of return. At the, at the light, at the day, they use their sniper to kill people and to snipe the Palestinian protesters there. And at night, they want the Palestinian people not talk about what have been happened in the day. They want them to talk about the bombs which falling on our areas here in Gaza. This, they are going to change the view. They are going to change the picture. They want to show the world that there is a war here between two military parties, which is completely not the true, bro. It's not a war. It's not even something like face between the Israeli occupation and the Palestinian protesters. They, it's only you know, you see, this is like positive and negative, bro. A peaceful protesters standing out of the borders, marching in peaceful way, and on the other side, there's a huge military tanks and snipers who is shooting bullets and who is shooting tear gas toward these people. That's what's going on there, bro. Here in Gaza. It's from every single angle, that even though the Israeli propaganda machine tried yeah. to hide this. It's from every single all day live streams. We, we can see it, the, the footage of it all day and what exactly has happened. And we have people like you on the ground who are reporting and who are taking the photographs and the videos. They can't run away from it. And like you said, they want to try and confront Hamas. They want to provoke Hamas to do something at this moment so they can say, look, we're fighting, there's two sides, when of course there's no army. The Kassam Brigades are not an army. They're part of a resistance organization. They're a militant wing of the resistance organization. And they, they are not 
an army taking on Israel. They're shooting you like a like fish in a barrel. Bro, if, if a Palestinian use the resistance and resisting, they blame Hamas. If the Palestinians are going to march, they blame Hamas. If someone is even had made an accident inside their uh, their places, they blame Hamas. If your wife is there, they will blame Hamas. Why? Why? When we are resist, you blame Hamas. When we are marching in peaceful way, you blame Hamas. Until when you would keep promoting your lies to the world and keep blaming Hamas. You are blaming Hamas for what? Hamas since 2014 until now did nothing to you. It didn't hurt you. Mm -hmm. It didn't yeah. even fire rockets to you. This is the truth, bro. Why you are always blaming Hamas, Hamas, and keep promoting that you are defending? Okay, another thing, bro, which is actually true, and you can even open Google Map. I have seen a video from a Zionist media says that they are defending and they are protecting the civilians, people inside their side who is living nearby Gaza. Bro, the distance between the houses of the Israeli settlers who is living inside the borders of Gaza, such like five kilometers or 10 kilometers. Our houses are such like 100 meters from the borders. Who have the right to yeah. defend now? You are putting your snipers away, such like five or 10 kilometers from the homes, and you are claiming that you are protecting your people. Here's another thing I like to challenge for all our Western listeners on here is why is it the Palestinians cannot fight under international law? They can fight uh, and anybody else, if anybody else anywhere in the world, and I firmly believe this was fighting an occupation, was fighting an invading government and used weapons like like if Hamas fires rockets, they don't do anything. But if they fire rockets or if they use the Qassam brigades to run operations against the Israeli military, why is this not legitimate? I think it's completely justified. I think you have every single right living in the conditions you do uh, and seeing the suffering uh, of your family members and everybody around you and the situation deteriorating. Why are you not allowed to fight? Why? I mean, what, what, ask what ask, ask the international you? community why. <laughs> when the thieves, when yeah. the thieves are coming to steal your home and killing you, why you don't have the right to resist? Why? Yeah, it's self-defense. Yes, ask them why. I mean, how does that feel when people tell you that you can't fight your, your uh, oppressor? Bro, uh, look, uh, the inspirational thing in this great march is the situation of Gaza. We don't need to forget that this city is still living under ongoing tight to blockade. And people are suffering so, so much. You don't know how much suffering we are suffering here and how much suffering we are living right now in these days. Believe me, and I swear, I'm talking to you while hundreds or maybe thousands of families here in Gaza who couldn't take their dinners inside their homes and who couldn't provide dinners to their children and families. Believe me. This is how is the humanitarian conditions here. I'm talking to you while like 80% of the city is sleeping in darkness right now. I'm talking to you while like 70% of the houses don't have water right now and they are waiting for water to drink or to fill the tank. I'm talking to you while too many wives and, are still, and mothers are still awakening until the midnight to wash the clothes, waiting for electricity to come. I'm talking to you while thousands of students are studying on this kind of light, small light, lead light, or a candles, studying and preparing for their exams in the next day, in the coming days. This is how is the conditions here in Gaza City. This is how is those peaceful protesters living right now. And these people seeing that using the great march of return and joining the great march of return is the only way to speak out to the whole world and to tell them that we are still here and our issue will not be as abs absent, bro. 
and to say to the whole world, we are only need our rights, the rights of the normal people, bro. I'm talking to you while the city is bleeding hardly, while the, the city is still in the intensive care room, bro. Believe me, I'm talking to you while the city is closed from the all sides. I'm talking to you while the Palestinian fishermen couldn't go to fish inside the sea. I'm talking to you while the Palestinian farmers didn't sell their crops yet and they don't know if they would sell it or not. This is how is the conditions. I'm talking to you, bro, while thousands of graduated people and educated people are dreaming to get even a daily job in their day. They are, bro, unemployment, bro. They do nothing in their daily routine. This is how is the humanitarian conditions. But despite of that, and despite of this suffering, bro, these people still have the power to speak out to the whole world about their rights. And that's what they need only. Why you didn't achieve to them their rights? Why you don't feed them? Why you didn't feed the poor children inside Gaza? This is how it's going. And the Israeli occupation, they do nothing. They only keep committing their crimes against the peaceful protesters there. That's it. That's what's going on. I told you, bro, I'm one of the first people who installed the tents there. And there's someone who's a local, he's my friend, as I said to you, Muthanna Najjar, that's his name in Arabic. This man and this journalist was the first one who installed the tents away from the borders to march in peacefully way. And I can provide to you many shots and videos while an elderly people and the children were coming there before the great march of return and enjoying their time, their evening, and doing the traditional dance and something like this. Why? I, I wanted to ask the whole international communities, why you are still keeping silent? Why we haven't seen anyone talking about what's going on? Why we haven't heard about any official opinion from the governments to stop the Israeli crimes, criminal? Why there's no one even made investigation in what's going on in Gaza? We need, and we are Palestinians are asking for a true and real investigation about the crimes which happened here in Gaza recently. We are really asking for that because we have the evidence about. We have the pictures of these bullets which exploded in your heart. We have the pictures of the snipers. Even you have seen a video for Israeli soldiers and snipers who sniped a Palestinian man there and he was taking it like he's fishing or something or he's such like shooting the bears there and catching the birds. Why? We are all human beings, bro. We are all human beings. If someone got killed in the West Country, yeah, if someone, Muthanna, uh, anyway, Muthanna Najjar is watching the live streaming and he commented what about the human rights also. He, he, he don't speak English very well, I'm always keep translating to him, and he would love to reach to the Western people to speak to them about what's going on in Gaza. I wish him a good luck. Uh, bro, that's it. If someone is getting shot in any Western country, you would see the whole world changing their profile pictures and making hashtag and even protesting inside the streets to to be in solidarity with the victim. But we are here not only one victim. We are here a hundreds of, over two million people are victims here. Why the world is still keeping silent? If you don't believe, if you don't believe us, okay, if you don't believe us, or if you don't believe them, come to Gaza and see by your eyes. Where's the problem? But don't stay neutral. Because when you are keep staying neutral, this is mean you are standing with the oppressed people against the oppressed people.
That's my invitation to the whole international communities people, to the whole people who is still believing in the human rights and who is still believing in humanity. Don't stay neutral. Take an action. Think. Watch. And then decide. Mm -hmm. That's it. We have we have a parliament full of war criminals, and, uh, and that's yeah. pretty much uh, what they are. I wanted to quickly ask you about uh, what, what's happening with the progression of the march. Have less people been coming to it? What's been the mood in Gaza since the start of this? How's this affected people in general in Gaza, in your opinion? Uh, brother, yani, at the first, at the beginning of the great march of return, people were hopeful and they were optimistic about the great march of return. And they were optimistic in the international law to take an action and to help them and to provide the assistance to him, to, to the people here. Uh, but unfortunately, right now, there is two parties of people and two opinions of people. Uh, you know, thousands of people were injured and they are still in the hospitals, but those people don't have uh, the power to provide medicine for themselves because the number of the people who were injured are thousands of people, and this has cost them too much money to buy the medicine for to get healing or to buy the medicine. And there is no too many organizations who are providing the medical services for the people here. And even the health of ministry today, they says they don't have the ability to stay continue and providing their services for the people who's marching there. Uh, the, so, people now just living such like a heartbroken feeling, bro. They, their hearts are broken. They are losing their dearest ones for nothing. They says, they, and they says, we haven't achieved anything, and we have. There's people who says that these protests have to stop, and there's people who says these protests have to continue and to stay continuous mm -hmm. until the 15th of May. Uh, we don't have any plan to break the borders between the Israeli and Palestinian people. You know why? Because no one can believe that a peaceful man could broke the borders or even cross inside the Israeli side because they are carrying weapons and they would kill thousands of people on 15th of May if that happened. Yeah, People are still blaming to march in a great way in the 15th of May, the coming 15th of May. And we don't know, maybe the, the march, the great march will stay continuous or it will be end in the 15th of May. And if it will be end, this is means we have did our best to reach to the world and we have did the whole choices to ask for our freedom and to ask for our, our human rights. Uh, I, I wanted to tell the people again who came to this live streaming, I'm inviting you all to go back and watch it again, just to imagine how is the situation here in Gaza and how hard it is to be in Gaza here these days and how hard it is to be protesting in a peaceful way and on the other side, there is a criminal snipers are shooting bullets fire inside your heart or inside your body or toward your friends and relatives people. Our message to the whole world. My message to the whole world says enough is enough. And it's your time to take an actions and to move. Don't stay silent. You're silent. Your silence is a part of the crime. Believe me, it's a part of the crime. This is what's going on, bro. And believe me, I'm so speechless. Wallahi, the words doesn't help me to describe details here, bro, or what, how I'm feeling here in Gaza as a Palestinian and as a human being. The things are the worst. Uh, the city is dying slowly. The city is still suffering and bleeding. And unfortunately, no one is care. No one caring 
no one hearing our voices. We believe that the voice of the truth will never die. We will keep speaking out to the world about our rights to return because we believe the peaceful march is one of the great ways in the history to get the victory and to resist and to get your rights back. That's why we call it the Great March of Return. The Israeli were affected because they are being exposed, exposed, exposed uh, in the international communities, and they are they have no evidence to show the violence or to show any kind of the or to prove their lies about these protesters. For an example, the Israeli defense minister said about Yasser Murtaja that he was controlling, controlling uh, a drone inside the marsh and when the people asked him to prove that he didn't answer and he didn't respond and I'm here to challenge him also personally please if you have a video for Yasser Murtaja controlling the drone inside the marsh show it and I believe you would not do that and you would not show that because I was there and I have witnessed that by my eyes. Yes, I was carrying Canon camera and recording videos there and shooting to capturing photos from there. Uh, he, also, he also said openly that there is no innocent people in Gaza. There are 2 million people, 52% children. There's not an innocent person, said the defense minister, Victor Lieberman. The, everything they say is laced with lies. Yes, yes, they're still lying. But unfortunately, yes, bro, this time they are feeling shame, bro, you know? They are feeling shame because they didn't have the ability to prove that there is a violence happening in the borders. And we will keep showing the world the truth and we are inviting the whole international organizations to make a clear investigation about what's happening in Gaza these days, especially in the Great March of Return. And we are ready to help them in this investigation and to provide the whole information to them. That's it. And this is what we wish. And we wish the whole world will wake up one day. Inshallah, we hope that so soon, bro. Is that all you wanted to say, brother? Or have you got anything else to, to mention? Bro, seriously, Wallahi, it's too hard to describe how I'm feeling these days. But I hope, I only hope to hear a good news from the Western side so soon. I hope to see thousands of people are protesting in solidarity with the Palestinian people. I hope to see. Uh, governments taking an action about what's going on and standing with the Palestinian people. And I hope to see a real human beings who can stop this crime against us and who can stop the massacres in Gaza City against the peaceful protesters. Bro. And I'm asking God, I'm asking Allah to protect us in the coming days. And who knows, bro, today I was able to be on live streaming with you and who knows, maybe in the next day they will tell you that Walid was killed in the Great March of Return. We don't know, bro. And every Friday when I go to the Great March of Return, I'm saying a goodbye to my wife and to my family. And I went to there, I go to there feeling that day will be the end day in my or the last day in my life and when I go back safety to home the first word I say thanks God I came back safety today that's how it's going here bro even the journalists here and every Friday they keep talking to each other checking on each other and they you know, they say a goodbye at Thursday to each other. And I hope if I couldn't come back next Friday, 
I hope the world will be waking after me and the world will understand my message, which I'm always talking about. Love and peace will never die. That's what I wish. I pray for my safety and I pray for the safety of the whole people. Enough is enough. People have to wake up. People have to take an actions. People have to see the truth. People have to stand with the people of Palestine. And believe me, the people who is still living under siege and who is living this hard and the humanitarian conditions, who is still having a voice to speak out to the whole world, those people will never give up. Believe me. If these people are another people, they must be give up since years ago. But the Palestinian people are really holy people and they are don't give up despite of everything. It's truly inspiring to see this march continue, especially there was a report that came out today, you alluded to, uh, to this before, that 50% of the medical supplies that, which are needed have been uh, completely depleted yes. and they don't have the means bro, of replenishing them. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm talking to you, bro, while hundreds and the thousands of people who were injured in the past days are still in the hospitals. And some of them who lost their food and who lost their hands and some of them who a, part, a small part of their bodies were cutted some of them have been healthy and now they need a wheelchair to use and they need an uh, industrial hands to use. That's how is the situation here. That's what's going on here. I'm talking to you, as I said, while a thousand and a hundred, maybe a hundred, I don't know the number, but believe me, you will be shocked if you are going to count them people of Gaza here are sleeping in so hard conditions and the human terminal conditions. The great march of return will be continuous. The great march of return is the only window between Gaza and between the modern world. Gaza have been separating and talking and now it's time after 15 of May it's time for the world to respond to the message of the Gazans people who went out despite of the killing and despite the massacres to speak out to the world about the right to return and the right to live in our homeland safety and about the right to break the siege on Gaza and to live and move freely. The right to build our state, our human beings right and the most basic rights in love such like the right to get electricity. Muthanna said seven says seven thousands people wounded in this great March return until now and hopefully the number will stop here and I hope that those criminal will stop what they are do every day. They do that every day bro, not only on Friday you have to know that. They do that every day, not only Friday. But the problem is Friday because thousands of people are coming because it's a weekend. Thousands of people are coming there. And they do, you know, they use the violence to make the number of the people who's coming to the marsh a little bit and to decrease them. That's why they are using the violence against the protesters' people. They don't need the voice of Palestinian to be out to the world. They don't need the Palestinian people to speak. And if they can shut your mouth, they would shut your mouth. They don't need the victim to talk. That's how it's going. Love and peace will never yeah. die, bro. And, and I think it's very important that people see uh, journalists such as yourself, hear from journalists such as yourself, because there's a great concerted effort in the West in particular to demonize not only Palestinians, but Arabs in general, and to dehumanize you to a point where you're not like me, you know, you're not like people in the Western countries. And like you said, if people are killed in mass numbers or shot in mass numbers, injured in Western countries, people suddenly care. They change the profile pictures. But we've seen 
thousands of people shot in Gaza, thousands of people in the West, what we're having articles written saying Palestinians died today. They just died. You just, you just fell over and decided to die. No, the Israelis have been shooting you. I think it's very important that people hear voices like yours and people follow you and, and follow other journalists. You know, you know, you know, bro, what's, you know, bro, I don't have any salary. It, it doesn't work for me. It's a duty for me. And I have been doing that since seven years now. I'm doing my best to help the Palestinians' voices to reach to the each corner in this world. I'm volunteering on my own by doing this, by carrying my camera, going out, recording live streaming. Bro. What's important in this great march of return that it was on live streaming. I have streamed such like fourth live stream from there and from the ground showing the crime. And you cannot, you know something, you cannot edit the live streaming or change it. It's live broadcast, bro. And I have did that third times and more than third times before the Great March of Return. I used the live streaming because if anyone who claims that we are lying, he could see the truth by his eyes. So the live streaming are most important in showing the people, the Palestinian media, and showing the people, the Western people, the Palestinian side, and what's going on exactly. I challenge them if they can even say anything about my live streaming, because I was there on the ground, my camera was there watching, and my eyes were there watching, and my heart also were there feeling about what's going on here. I have smelled a lot of tears gas in the past days. I have been so tired in the past weeks, bro. And this kind of work is really hard. You cannot imagine how much hard it is to be an activist or a journalist working to cover what's going on here in Gaza. It's really hard work. It's taking so long time from me. I even couldn't spend time with my family because I have been so busy in working and covering the truth. I believe this kind of work is one of the most wonderful humanitarian and missions in life because you are carrying the voice of the voiceless people and you are speaking it out and repeating it out again this is me i'm volunteer bro i don't work for any official organization or any official channel or media but hopefully inshallah one day i can get a chance of job to get even a small income for me to stay you know I cannot do that, keep doing that on my own. Bro. I have a family to care, I have people to care, I have my responsibilities too. But despite of that, I am keep doing what I do every day, is showing the reality of Gaza to the whole world, and I will not, I will never give up. Thank you. <laughs> if you have any question, bro, feel free to ask me. If the followers also who's watching, have any question they can ask me because I'm lucky and you are lucky too because I'm free today. <laughs> yeah, it, it's amazing that we've got uh, the, the chance, uh, that I've got the chance to get you on here and express your Thank thoughts. Thank you. It's, a, to it's an honor for me, bro. Wallah. It's, a, it's a great honor for me to be here and speaking to you and to viewers about the reality of Gaza and about what's going on in Palestine these days. But the fact that you're down there and you're doing this uh, and exposing this for people and, and you've been able to get through to so many people. I've seen a lot of people uh, who have shared your stuff, that have been watching what you're doing. And I, I really desperately wanted to get this conversation out because what you've expressed here in this, people need to hear from somebody like yourself who is in Muthanna, Gaza. Sorry for interrupting, bro. Muthanna says, I am Murad. I wanted two gunshots in my leg despite I'm wearing my ambulance form. Uh, this Murad, Muthanna is talking about an ambulance man who were working in Rafah camp by uh, carrying, the, uh, carrying the injured people from 
the borders uh, from the camp to the hospitals. And I visited Murad. Me and Muthanna were together and we visited Murad inside the hospital. Despite he was wearing his uh, T-shirt, which showing that he's ambulance, in the ambulances team, he got shot too. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely just absolutely disgraceful what, what the Israelis are doing at that border. And it just shows to the extent that their inhumanity goes. And the fact that people are turning a blind eye, they're not looking to what's actually happening is absolutely disgraceful. But I, I think that, that unfortunately, it is making people sort of discouraged, like you've said. But at the same time, I think as personally looking at it from the outside, and I know many people, including Palestinians in the diaspora community, who look at this and feel absolutely proud of people like you and absolutely inspired Thank by you. people like you who are going to this march and who are doing this and showing to the world what Israel is. The last, quotes, the last words uh, that I wanted to say is, dear world, I'm from Gaza but we don't know to where we are going or when this will be stopped. We don't know, but you must be know when that will be stopped. That will be stopped when you start to take an action, when you start to work on this thing to stop, when you are decide to stop the massacre, the massacre will be stopped because the power of people are most powerful thing in life. The power of people are strong, is stronger than any weapons in life. The power of voices. Imagine there are great march in the whole Western countries asking the Israeli occupation army to stop the massacre in Gaza. I'm sure in that moment Israeli will stop the massacre. That's how we can stop them. We cannot stop them by violence or by using any kind of force, bro. We can stop them by our voices only. And I believe in that. If you just sit for a minute and imagine a millions of people in the Western countries are going out to the streets and speaking out to the whole world and to the Israeli side that these massacres have to stop then the Israeli occupation forces would stop that. This is the way, this is how they can stop the massacre against us. And that's why I'm doing my best to reach to many people and to, to make the Palestinian voice reach to the whole world. Because I believe love and peace will never die. Thank you for being on here and saying all that you've said, brother. And it's, it's amazing to hear this opinion and to have this opinion heard by so many as well. I, I really hope that everybody listening to this uh, feels as inspired inshallah. as I do. And Inshallah, it's not going to be uh, too bad for you in the coming days and, and weeks leading up uh, to the Nakba day. Inshallah. Uh, I really pray for me uh, to stay alive until that moment. <laughs> then we can go to the live streaming again. Inshallah. Inshallah. Okay, brother. Okay. Bro. It was great speaking. Have a great night. I hope you sleep well, man. I hope you can get some rest. Thank you. And thank you. Peace, man. Peace. Love and peace, brother. Bye.